Were you expecting my voice? Well, that's too bad. It is I, text-to-speech bot. In celebration of both my birthday and the 8th anniversary of my YouTube career, I am doing a question and answer video. You all asked your questions in my weird server and I am here to answer them. Well, the ones that aren't ridiculous anyway. Now then, let's begin the cringe content I have planned. Max asks, what do you think of your Discord community? And which mod do you think has pulled their weight the most since their recruitment? My community is definitely filled with its weirdos and degenerates. Nike. But my opinion on it is I very much enjoy the company of you all. I wouldn't be here without any of you and I love that I get to talk to you guys like this. It's a little early to say it but thank you all for your viewership and your feedback on my videos. Following. She's not in the server anymore but she's the one who built it up. Neither Nicola nor I knew what we were doing when we first made it. Daloming is the one who made the server bots in the level up system. Actually, without her, we would have been overrun by bots a long time ago. There wouldn't even be the roles we have or the welcome chat if we didn't have her or her hard work. And I'm totally not saying that just because she's my little sister. The local menace to society asks, Fight me. And what is the most unique OC in Xenoverse you have ever seen? And will there be any more Rule 34 drawings of your OCs? That isn't a question. But, find me in Melty Blood. We'll talk there. As of Xenoverse OCs, the most unique ones I've seen have been on the PC side of the community. I can't name the OCs off the top of my head though. And some of their owners are dicks anyway so I'd rather not give them free publicity. And, are there going to be more loots of my characters? I'm a diehard anime fan. I think you already know the answer to that. Yes, there will be more. But I would rather have drawings that portray the hardship and feelings of my characters before I get more artwork that just shows gratuitous X. I'm not making hentai. I'm writing plots. A Super Saiyan Slayer named Smash Mellow asks, Who is your favorite anime trap? And will you and Nicola ever do team combos in other games? I'll be generous with this question and give more than one. My favorite anime traps are as follows. Estalfo from Fate. He's an adorable little airhead and I just want to hug him until he passes out. Among other things. Kiku from Naruto. He's prettier than Sakura indeed. Seika Tatsuka from my youth romantic comedy is wrong as I expected. That ambiguously gay minx gave me so much laughter when I watched that anime. And Schrodinger from Helsing. I like Nako characters. I'll leave it at that before certain furry police show up. She knows who she is. As for the team combos, I can't promise anything. I have tried to do other projects with Nicholas since Xenoverse has long since become stale for me. But he and I can't seem to agree on a game to play. I would like to bring you all some more team combos and if we end up agreeing on something, you guys will know as soon as it happens. Derek asks, do you know the Kirby series? If yes, favorite game and character? And Demon Milf, do you like the idea or not? Yes, I'm well aware of the Kirby series. I haven't been living under a rock since 1992, but I have never played any of the games relating to him besides Smash. And I'm not much of a fan of those games either. Nothing against them. They just don't catch my interest. As of the demon question. To quote a certain police girl. Fuck the hell yes. It's one of my favorite types of villains and character archetypes. Hell. You could technically count a certain Saiyan of mine as that due to a certain scientist's tampering. She was a mother at the time of the tragedy. Fantastic asks. Favorite character in all of Dragon Ball history? And thoughts on the Dragon Ball Super Brawler 2 movie? Beto's without a doubt. A beautiful woman who's a sassy bitch is the second easiest way to become one of my favorite characters. I just wish she had a little more character outside of that. Same with Whis who's my third favorite. And, regarding Brawley, his movie was a breath of fresh air. I've long grown sick of the Dragon Ball community's insistence on putting him in everything. Even when it made so little sense. So when the movie was announced and Brawley was revealed, I groaned. I can't tell you how much I loved it when I saw the movie make a real attempt at giving him character development. 
even if it was going to inevitably devolve into a punch fest. Long story short, I very much enjoyed the movie. Average Kokomi Enjoyer asks, Do you believe pineapples belong on pizza? And what's your main team in Genshin Impact? Yes. Pineapple absolutely belongs on pizza and Gordon Ramsay's uncultured ass can suck my bigger tit. I will die on this hill. And my main team on Genshin consists of Yenfei as the DPS. The Traveler and Beto as support. And Barbara as healer. When I pull catching that may change however. Frost asks, do you like ice cream cake? And what's your favorite song for this year? Yes, I do. Though I prefer pie and cheesecake to it. One of the best ways to get on my good side? Bring me some pie! My favorite song for this year is looking to be the strong and hit stuff from Ruby. It just speaks to me as someone who's suffered from their fair share of identity crises. Now if Ruby could just release the damn soundtrack. Freddy asks, What's your favorite color? Really? I mean I don't want to call you out Freddy but really? It's such a grade school type question. Yet it's somehow still a better question than Delta's. In any case, my favorite color is a tie between red and blue. It's why you see a lot of my OCs draped in blue a lot actually. The worst villain in Spider-Man asks, What's your favorite game from childhood? And what's your favorite childhood show? Battle for Bikini Bottom easily. I would play that game every day after school when I was growing up. Though I didn't love it enough to buy the remaster cash grab. And my favorite childhood show was Supernatural. Yes I know that's a little odd but the show began when I was around 8 and ended very recently. So I grew up with that show and it was like watching an old friend leave when it finally ended last year. Giant Green Dinosaur asks. What's your favorite original character that you created? And what's your favorite original character Nicola created? Ilayla. She's a remnant from when I wrote novels in high school and college. I repurposed a villain from my old notes and turned her into a slight anti-hero. Not much else changed between her and her original incarnation Tanisha. But Ilayla's creation is when I actually felt like a content creator so she'll always be my favorite. Kiyami is my favorite of Nicola's characters. I mean the tail alone. Her. What? Nick doesn't own her? Well you see the thing about that is. Omni Prince of Saiyans asks. Who's your favorite Naruto character? And which anime soundtrack do you like the most? Kanata Hayuga. Easily. Not only that but she's my favorite fictional character of all time. She's an adorable and sweet little Cinnabon that spearheaded my fall into the rabbit hole that is anime. And can you blame me? I mean look at her. Look at that smile. The soundtrack of Fate is my favorite at the current moment. Their primary composer is Ame and they have yet to dish out a bad song. You have a plethora of choices between heartfelt moments, badass fight music, or just plain old image songs. Fate's soundtrack has everything you could want. A Bishop of House Doggett asks, Do you ever plan on making a series on Dark Souls? And what do you think of the story Shadow over Innsmouth? I'm gonna feel bad for how short this answer is. No I don't plan to make a series on Dark Souls unless they release a new game. As for Shadow over Innsmouth, I regret to tell you I wasn't even aware that was a thing until this question was asked of me. I'm not exactly one to judge things I know nothing about so I will refrain from giving an opinion on it. Nicola asks, what is your favorite song from Dragon Ball? I suppose it would be Brawly's Rage and Sorrow. Though I don't really have a very high opinion on the Dragon Ball soundtrack. Dragon Ball is my very first anime but its soundtrack never grabbed my attention like Naruto's did or even Bleach's. Actually I don't think I can even call BRS my favorite so much as. One I like slightly better than the others. Omnesi asks. Who's your least favorite fictional character ever? And how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Shinji fucking Mato, heir to the withering Mati bloodline, and the adopted brother of the beautiful and sagacious Sakura Mato. This worthless piece of shit spent his entire childhood raping his adopted little sister to the point that she was a broken shell. And even in the main story he tries to rape every girl he comes across and even murder the guy he claims to be his best friend. 
Sorry, I'm ranting a bit. He is my most hated character and I have a saying for him. The only good Shinji is a dead Shinji. Tyrant Hawkeye asks, Favorite horror game? I don't have one as of this video. Growing up I didn't like horror as they would give me nightmares for months on end. So I tended to steer clear of that genre. It's only been since 2014 that I started even considering that genre for video games. But I still haven't played enough to have a favorite as of yet. Though no Resident Evil 7 and 8 are ones I do enjoy a bit. Comic asks, favorite meme. Why did you make me do this? Sue asks, is there a tier list of your CACs and what would it be? Yes, there actually is. The tier list goes as follows. Khalid at the very top of my named CACs. The personification of death and chaos. He's not the strongest of all my originals. He's third from the top, with two others towering over him. I affectionately refer to them as almighty idiots. Next is Alayla, the personification of time and space. She's my second strongest named CAC. Though she limits herself so everyone around her doesn't go insane from simply being within a certain radius of her. At third is Anjay, the personification of time. Yes, it's a different domain than her twin sisters. Fourth is Sirocco. However, her placement switches a little due to her ability to assimilate others' energy. Fifth is Tyrant. I won't say why beyond making a certain deal with a certain devil. Sixth is Kiana. At her current power weight, she stands just below 100% Beerus. Seventh is Kemiko. Though this is simply because she's still a child and hasn't gotten close to her prime yet. Aether, Tavi, and Ashley. Ashley is slightly stronger than her husband, but it isn't much of a difference. Finally, Azami is at ninth place. And finally, Bobby asks, Are my jokes funny? Your jokes are bad and you should feel bad. Now enjoy the rest of the video.